Hey guys, Waddock Studios here, and today we're gonna kind of take a dive down something that's extremely technical. But if you hang in with me, um, today's subject matter is gonna be uh, setting up for a Android Studio development pipeline where you can build to both UA5 for Android projects, like specifically for the MetaQuest 3 or MetaQuest 2, um, but you can also deploy to 427 uh, projects, Android based projects from the same machine. Now this is a bit of a cluster because they both have different requirements. Their documentation is like all over the place, but hopefully I can kind of wrangle in some of that madness and take you through this um, and, and hopefully make some sense out of it. Um, so if you look at the launcher, the first thing you're going to need to do is install the target platform for both Unreal Engine 427 and for 5.4. The second thing I would recommend is going and looking at the documentation for Unreal Engine 5.4 um, and following it as far as the turnkey setup is in, uh, concerned. Um, what that means is that if you've had if you have this done and set up for Unreal Engine 427, you're gonna have to uninstall Android Studio. Um, you can do that under Add Remove Programs. Just go here and you know uninstall and start with a clean, clean slate um, and if you want to you can go clean out this app data local folder for Android Studio and make sure that you don't have anything lingering behind but the remove, removal process should take care of that for you um, and don't worry I, I will have a lot of links in the description of this video to try to help you guys be able to go acquire all of this information or you know downloads specifically um, the documentation for 5.4 is a little confusing because, you know, um, if you start at the development requirements, it makes you feel like you need to do something right here. It's like, here's all the development requirements. Um, you need to go get this stuff. Um, it's probably intended to just be, this is what you need. And then go ahead and go to the getting starting page and go to the install summary. And even here, like the first thing that it says is run turnkey. <coughs> Uh, this isn't true like if you was to run turnkey at this step you would you would fail um it's gonna install android studio but it's gonna fail because can command line tools aren't gonna be installed so like you're gonna need to run it again so it's it, it's a little bit of a race condition that they have here i would recommend going to the archive download finding the version that they recommend here flamingo uh, patch 2221 and going ahead and going to SDK tools and check this box. Once you have this done, reboot your machine, reload up on Unreal Engine 5, 4, go to the Android drop down and you're going to see a thing like they have up here. And it's so weird. I have to screw all over the place for this where it says open the Unreal editor, go to platforms, Android and install the SDK. What this is going to do then is going to run a script that UAT used to run and it's basically going to turnkey all of this uh, required uh, SDK version side by side NDK and Java into your Android Studio install. So all of this will be taken care of for you. Um, the JDK will be shoved into your program files Android Studio. It's like it's, like, it's this location here um, and then it's going to create the Java home NDK root uh, entries in your environment um, it's, it goes in here if you guys aren't familiar with it system environment and variables I'm not going to show you them because I have keys and everything else in there that I don't want to share but this is what it's going to do um, so at this point you're going to be ready on the Unreal Engine 5 side you don't have to change anything else you're you know it's going to be kind of pre-set up for the min and max version um, I can open up a, a project really quick and show you what I did at this point because now I knew I need to go to 427 and I need to get it working. Um, and unfortunately, because the engine looks these home directories for you know every engine version, um, it, it's not gonna like you. You would set it up for four and it would break five, or you would set it up for five and it would break four. That's just the nature of how the engine behaves at this point 
So that's why I said do Unreal Engine 5, use Flamingo, and then now I'm gonna teach you how you can override at the global level for Unreal Engine 427 and then stash that INI off and then clear that back out for Unreal Engine 5, or you can leave it there, it doesn't really matter, and you can override it at the project level. So if we open up Unreal Engine 5 in your project settings, if you go into Android, you're gonna have a couple things you need to do. Um, you're gonna have to accept this license. You're gonna have, you know, minimum and target uh, version. This can be 2223. I just wanted to show you these things. And then the SDK and NDK, I have latest in Android 26 listed here, and this is overwritten at the project level. So if we go to the SDK here, you'll see I have blanked this out, and that's intentional. UE5 tends to respect the project level overrides. Um, and I'm happy about that. I could even specify the build tool version, but I just left it blank because it's gonna go with the latest and Unreal Engine 5 seems to be happy with that. And I can confirm that I can build out with these settings. Um, the next thing would be satisfying the Unreal Engine 4 requirement. If we go and look at this setup requirement, it's gonna tell you like, you have to download Android Studio 4.0. And that would technically be correct, but we can't do that because we'll break Unreal Engine 5. So you'll leave Flamingo there. And what I did was I went down and I wanted to see what it was doing. And it's like, oh, okay. UAT, their, their command line, the setup Android bat seems to be wanting to use the command line tools eight. Well, we know in the previous Unreal Engine 5 requirement, we had to set up all of the command line tools, right? So we have eight. We know that's there, that's cool. So we go back here and we go to find set up Android bat. This is gonna be located in the um, program files, Epic Games 427, Engine Extras Android. And you're gonna modify that bat. I would say open it in um, Visual Studio Code and do a control F and then find this SDK manager equals and make sure that you replace it as it states here um, to update this. Um, if you're on Windows, you don't have to worry about the sh file or whatever, but you will want to update the command file. Um, so bat and command, you will need to update both of these mentions here. Um, and then once you do that, it will download the NDK and the SDK that you need. Um, and then you can validate that it's gonna go grab the versions that you need. Um, and it tells you here, like what your specific versions are going to be. This has the SDK API level as latest and Android as 19. Um, so whenever I scroll down here and I looked at this 21B um, for 427, what I did after it downloaded this step and it succeeded, it says it was successful. I, I navigated out to um, this app data file location. And then I went to uh, local, I went to Android, I went to SDK and I went to NDK and I just validated that the version that it needs was here. So this is the Unreal Engine 5 one. This is the version it needed for Unreal Engine 427. Um, I just grabbed this additional one here because I was testing some things, but that's, you know, you see which NDKs you'll need. Um, the other thing that you can do is open up Android Studio and validate that your CMake uh, requirements are met. So if you go to SDK tools and you scroll down, you'll be able to see your CMake versions. Um, another thing that you're gonna need that they don't really go over here, it's kind of tucked away, is uh, Clang. So if I go to add remove programs, you'll need to get these Clang versions. Um, I'm pretty sure the setup bat does this for you and the SDK turnkey does this for you, but I wanna show you that this is a requirement so that you can grab the manual if you need to. Um, they just install, they're an installer. They'll go where they need to go. You don't have to do anything special with them, but they are a requirement for this build operation. Um, so yeah, once that's done, Everything should be good to go. Um, and then we'll open up 
Unreal Engine 427. So I'll just go to one of those projects and we'll open up, just, we'll do the fan made one because it's a deployment that I've been running uh, recently. Um, and as you can see here, this is what it's it's calling and it looks like it's grabbing CMake for you uh, 21.1. So here's the version that it's grabbing of NDK. Um, here's the build tools that it's ensuring that you have installed. Um, and then what I did was, uh, again, the 427 does not respect, I wanna mention this, it's not like Unreal Engine 5. It is not going to respect this project level override. For whatever reason, I tried everything underneath the sun, I could not get it to respect this. So at the point, at this point, what I did was I overrode it at the project level. And that's why I said blank this out on Unreal Engine 5. It says, this is the settings for Android SDK for all projects. So that means whenever I put something here, it's gonna update Unreal Engine 5. If I update, if I open the Unreal Engine 5 project, those settings will be here. So what I did was I created an INI file and I backed it up inside of my project. And I stuck that inside of the config folder and I named it Android SDK 427 INI. So if I open that, it goes out and it says, hey, Here's the Android SDK, which is the default location. That is where Flamingo sticks the SDK. Here's the NDK version that I need for 427, which again, it was on that list in the documentation. I just made sure that it downloaded the right one. And then because I saw that the tool version that was using was eight, I assumed, and I also did a little bit of cheating and asked Copilot, but I assumed it was Java 8 that I needed. so. I, um, I went and grabbed OpenJDK update eight, you know, uh, OpenJDK eight, and it was uh, 412. And if you need to know how to do that manually, you just come to Google and go open JDK download. If I could type, and it's gonna ask you like a bunch of like questions, or at least the um, the one, yeah, here. So if you go to Open Logic and you select this. You can actually say, I want Java 8, I want Windows, I want 64-bit, and I want JDK. And then, boom, it's the first one on the list. Um, so you'll grab that, um, and then you can create you, like what I did was I created a tools directory, which you saw the path there. So I put it in tools, I put it inside of this folder here, and then in Unreal Engine, I just pointed to it. And then again, as it recommended Android, uh, I think it was Android 28 on their documentation. Like we can go back and look real quick. Um, oh no, it was 19. It was like really crazy version. But anyway, um, it's here. Boom. Yeah, platforms Android 28. So I just looked at what this was and made a couple of guesses based on what the documentation told me, stuck it in there. And then for NDK, I just said, you know what, latest is cool with this um let's see if it'll build and it was happy um and that's also because you're pointing directly to the ndk directory right here so when i toggle back and forth i basically and you can export these settings right so once you get done you export it it's going to ask you where you want to put it i just stuck it in my source control but yeah when you get done you need to remember to wipe these out are you can leave them here but they're gonna be here in ue5 when you load up and then you're gonna need to overwrite everything at the project level in ue5 which it will respect but i will include links to everything that i've went over in this video um hopefully that is helpful for you guys um i could go through hooking up my headset and packaging out and showing you that this deploys i'm not going to go through all of that what i will show you is that um if I go to one of these projects um, and we go to like a build Android, you can see that like this has been cooked out recently. Um, let me see, saved uh, stage builds. Um, you'll see that this has been cooked out very, very recently. So all of this works. Um, the thing that you will need to do, I mean, 
and you can go to the oculus website and kind of follow their guide on the tools that you're going to need but i will mention that you're going to need to go grab the runtime metaquest runtime tools for like quest link that's what it listed as it used to just be the oculus runtime um but you go to the meta's website you're going to need to download the quest runtime and then i highly recommend you grabbing the uh, developer hub because this is going to come with the adb driver it's going to come with device manager it's going to let you read your device logs um, it'll let you cast your device um, once it's connected uh, it'll let you do performance analyzer um, I just I, I highly recommend this it'll also let you like sideload apps right which is what I've been doing um, when I test uh, applications um, so yeah I highly um, recommend this uh this tool uh i don't know how i would live without it developing um so yeah i will try to include download links to all of that information like all of these different things um important step it seems that 420 again 427 ignores the project level setup if anybody you know out there finds out that that's not true and somehow you can make it respect project level overrides awesome hit me up let me know um, and that means like without engine modifications, that's something else I probably need to state here. This is vanilla 27 from the launcher running the MetaQuest plugin. Um, so I haven't, this is not the Oculus branch. This is just, um, I think it might even still be Oculus's. Yeah, it's still Oculus VR and Oculus, uh, subsystem. I don't even have OpenXR, I don't think, on this. Um, no, I do. I have OpenXR. Um, but yeah, so this is vanilla. This is not Oculus's branch. Um, this is not a source build with a modified uh, code structure to read an updated uh, NDK and SDK, because I've seen that where people have modified source to be able to use the latest SDK and NDK from Android Studio. Um, so, you know, the trick is override global settings, specify the JDK because I, the project setting won't let you do that. Um, it appears that you can only do that here. Um, and then stash it off somewhere, clear these settings out, an Unreal Engine 5 override at the project level, all is happy in the world. Um, for all of the Patreon members out there, uh, for Wildock Studios, I want to say thank you. Thanks for the recommendations for the videos. And um, all of the Discord members, uh, you as well, keep recommending things for me to do tutorials on. I hope that this has been helpful to you guys. Um, I'll quickly um, scroll through my SDK platform so you can see what I have here. Um, that way you can rewind the video or look at this if you need to. Um, again, the setup for 427 and the turnkey is gonna grab what you need here so you don't need to worry about this too much. Um, and here is the SDK tool versions that I have. And then we'll go to the side-by-side -side versions that I have. Then the command line tools I have all, 2C makes, SDK platform tools right here, 35. Um, and that's 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 it. You know, uh, make sure to check your system environment variables and you only make sure you only have one entry for these. Um, and make sure it's happy with the settings for UE5, and then you'll override for 427, and you should be good to go. That's that's pretty much it. Hopefully this has been helpful. Um, until next time, toodles and happy developing, guys. Later.